And as Botswana looks to expand its exports, there are rising concerns over increasing trade protectionism. CGTN's Sean Caleb's caught up with Botswana's president, Mo Mowitsi Masisi, and asked him about the impact so far. The president has only been in power for a relatively short time, taking over a country that is both stable and often a little controversial when it comes to its global outlook. Listen. Well, you know, we're a very small economy, and the world order is very important to us. If there's anybody who's going to be hurt, out of this, we are always the first victims. So it bothers us. Tell me about that. Why do you think you're the first victims? Do you think that, like, collateral damage from these big... No, it's a very simple one. You know, we are, we are a, an economy that's been doing fairly well, stable, and uh, it's a pretty narrow-based economy. Uh, our primary export is diamonds. And so... Diamonds being something that is uh, precious. Um, if in any family setting, choices have to be made about what to procure, uh, they are not on top of the list of things to keep buying. So if there's instability in any of our major markets, and the U.S. is by far our biggest market, followed by China, the protagonists in this, we are concerned. Botswana is wonderful stewards of the people and of the economy. But something also very important right now is conservation. Uh, and everybody's read the stories about, you know, the alleged poaching uh, massacres and safaris and tourism, such a wonderful part and such a rich history in, in Botswana. How do you move past that and convince people conservation is so important to your country? Well, I really didn't think we need to convince people conservation is important because Botswana and conservation are Siamese twins. Botswana is conservation, conservation is Botswana. Tell me of a country that's dedicated 42% of its national land resource to conservation. You tell me. Tell me a country in the world has committed all its security agencies to the protection of our flora and fauna. You tell me. Tell me of a country that's deployed its army to protect its wildlife from poachers. Tell me of a country that's so strict with its, for the protection of its wildlife, that in the event that you're encountered as a poacher by our rangers, our armed police, intelligence services, even prisons department who patrol our game reserves, and you don't obey their commands, they shoot and they don't shoot to injure. In the event that you're unlucky, your life may end. And you talk a bit about your diamonds. Um, talk to me about that and any kind of misconceptions you think international community may have about diamonds. If there are two things that we hold dear to ourselves, it's our diamonds, it's our wildlife and ecology. Obviously, they come second to people. Sure. But diamonds are the mainstay of the economy. Everybody who's been to school in Botswana benefited from our diamonds. Everybody who's been through a health facility in Botswana has benefited from our diamonds. Everybody who has had to undergo the most nascent in intervention with HIV AIDS, either testing, counseling, or even drug therapy, benefits from our diamonds. Every road traveler, every person who flies into Botswana, everybody who breathes the air in Botswana benefited from diamonds. Because we've used those resources to invest in our social development. And we always will. Being in the proximity to Angola and people talk about blood diamonds, how do you move beyond that? Angola has been at peace for more than 20 years now. I know of no blood diamonds in Angola. But in the event that there are blood diamonds anyway, they are totally illegal in our country. We have developed what's called the Kimberlite process. It's a stringent set of rules and procedures which acts to confirm and give confidence to the ethical extraction, ethical, transparent selling of our diamonds. And it's not easy to break through our Kimberley process.